Hey guys, welcome back to our Facebook page. So as you know, we're doing a lot of our educational opportunities via Facebook. And if you've tuned in over the last few weeks, we've learned about the importance of wetlands. We've learned about sea turtles and birds. And this week we're gonna fo focus on a very special animal and that's horseshoe crabs. And um, so today's lesson is gonna be set up to where we do our story. And instead of doing a demonstration, we're actually gonna be doing a take home arts and crafts activity. And that link is provided in this post, so that's something you guys can download and print at home. You just need markers, crayons, scissors, and tape for that. Um, we'll go over that at the very end. But the reason we're going to talk about horseshoe crabs today is because they're a very important species. We call them a keystone species because they play a very vital role in the ecosystem. Um, and they also have some misconceptions about them, which we're going to be talking about a little later on. But this week's story is called High Tide for Horseshoe Crabs. It's written by um, Lisa Schnell and illustrated by Alan Marks. And this is gonna focus on a population of horseshoe crabs that are found up in the Delaware Bay. So that's north of where we are here in Gloucester Point, Virginia. Um, but we still do see this species along the Virginia coast pretty often. Um, and so this is gonna give us some great information um, and beautiful illustrations along the way. So we'll go ahead and begin. It's starting. One spring night, the first horseshoe crab lunges onto shore. They're arriving. More horseshoe crabs follow, just as, just as generations have done since before the time of the dinosaurs. Adult horseshoe crabs crawl from the muck of their winter homes and swim towards land. Millions of horseshoe crabs head for Delaware Bay. High tides carry them far up onto the beach where their eggs will develop best. They're flapping. On flickering wings, flocks of seabirds fly through wind and rain, through day and night. Some of these birds weigh only as much as a handful of paper clips. Still, they are powerful enough to fly thousands of miles from South America all the way up to the Arctic where they will lay their eggs. One of the few stops they make along the way is on the shores of Delaware Bay. They're traveling. Scientists journey to Delaware Bay from around the world. Some come to study the horseshoe crabs. Others come to study the birds. Citizen scientists, both adults and children, come year after year to observe and help the professional scientists gather data. Families on vacation, curious about the commotion, also stop to watch. They're laying. So many horseshoe crabs crowd the shore that their shells clatter against one another. Each female horseshoe crab with a male clinging to her back searches for a bare patch of sand. She burrows down and lays a golf ball sized cluster of small green eggs. Her digging disturbs other horseshoe crab eggs, exposing them to waves and sun. They're landing. Bony and weak, the migrating shorebirds arrive in Delaware Bay. They are hungry, very, very hungry. It's happening. They're tagging. Scientists tag horseshoe crabs each spring. Months or even years later, when people find tagged horseshoe crabs on the beach and report them, Scientists learn answers to basic questions. How far does this animal travel? How long does it live? How many horseshoe crabs are out there in the sea? They're feasting. The birds find an easy meal. Tiny nutritious horseshoe crab eggs float in the water. They drift along the tide line. They mix in with the sand. The bird's long beaks are just right for digging. During the two weeks a bird spins along the shores of Delaware Bay, it gobbles so many thousands of horseshoe crab eggs that it may double its body weight. They're growing. Plenty of little green horseshoe crab eggs rest deep in the sand, protected from pointy bird beaks, scientist probes, and crashing waves. Each day, inside each egg, a shapeless bundle of cells begins to look more and more like a miniature horseshoe crab. And then 
they're leaving. One evening, when their bodies are fat and the wind is just right, whoosh, in a whirl of wings, the birds leave. Some stragglers keep feeding for a few more days, but most of the birds zoom up to the Arctic to lay their own eggs. They're leaving. Scientists and vacationers brush sand off their binoculars. They pack up data sheets, beach chairs, and stories, then return home to share what they've learned. They're leaving too. Most adult horseshoe crabs ride tides and currents back into deep water. Others won't reach water quickly enough though, and they will die on the beach. About two weeks later, the young horseshoe crabs burst from their eggs. Now nearly the size of ladybugs, they crawl from the moist sand and swim away to begin their own journey. It's over. Until next year. So again, <clears throat> this is a great book because it does highlight that horseshoe crab population up north in the Delaware Bay and the importance of this animal up there and things that humans are doing to also conserve horseshoe crabs. Now, I did talk about in the beginning, there are some misconceptions about this animal. Um, so they're actually not crabs. So I know in their name is horseshoe crab, they're crab, right? Well, they're actually closely related to spiders and scorpions. Um, when you do see them on the beach, which is pretty common, especially during those summer months when they are uh, mating and laying those eggs, usually it's around May and June when there's a nice full moon or new moon in the sky. Many people might find that they're pretty intimidating or kind of scary looking or dangerous. And I have a stuffed one here to show you guys today. Um, but they're actually very harmless animals. So if you do find one on the beach, for example, say it's flipped upside down or it's really far up the beach and you wanna make sure it gets back to the water okay, um, most people kinda wanna grab it by the tail. They're like, ooh, icky. Um, this is actually a bad thing. We don't want to grab it by its uh, tail. This is also called their telson. Um, but it's extremely weak, so we don't want to grab it there. They do use this to help them steer. So when they're on the bottom of the ocean, it helps them go in the right direction. Also, if they do flip over, they can use their um, telson to basically flip themselves back upright. Okay. So if you do approach one and you do want to pick it up, <clears throat> We ask that you kind of grab it on the sides here, kind of like you're picking up a bowl. And this is called their uh, prosoma. So this large area here. So you wanna grab them on the edge of their prosoma and you can lift them up and carry them that way. They do have three distinct body parts. So we mentioned that prosoma, this top section here, where we find their eyes, we have their abdomen, this middle section, and their tail or their um, telson. Um, underneath them, you will notice that they have their legs, um, and this is where they're most closely related to things like spiders. And when they are on the bottom of the seafloor and they find that prey item, they're actually searching using these legs and they'll crush up their food using this leg and bring it towards their mouth. Um, now horseshoe crabs have a really interesting ability when it comes to humans. Um, their blood, can be used in the medical field. Now, horseshoe crabs have blue blood, and this is due to a copper element found within their blood, and their blood can be extracted and used to help identify any kind of bacterial contaminants. Now, this is a great thing, of course, for the medical field, but it's not always the best thing for a horseshoe crabs because it results in over-harvesting of them. Anytime you take a lot of an animal out of their environment, it's not gonna end up in a good situation. So we need to make sure we have a balanced population so they can keep reproducing. And this brings us back to, if you don't have a lot of horseshoe crabs and you don't have them laying a lot of eggs, those migratory birds that are coming down the coastline aren't gonna have anything to eat. So they do rely a lot on this horseshoe crab, which makes them, that's one of the reasons why they are such an important keystone species is they help those migratory birds. Um, in the book, they also mentioned tagging. So this little silver plate you see on the side of our horseshoe crab, those tags are placed there by scientists, of course, and used for tracking purposes. So there's tons of organizations that are doing a lot to help conserve this species, whether it's tagging, 
educational opportunities. Some places up north are even doing things where they're cultivating eggs to protect that population even further. So it's really important that we do protect them because horseshoe crabs are one of the oldest living species on our planet. That's why we call them living fossils. Very fascinating animals and we want to ensure the longevity of this species for the future. And then finally, we do have that arts and crafts activity. So if you do click on that link, it shows you the cutout of our horseshoe crab. I've already kind of pre-made mine for you guys to view today. You can color yours any color you want. I went with the kind of basic brown color. You can name them, you can do whatever you want with your horseshoe crab. But that cutout has the three body sections. So the prosoma, the abdomen, and the telson, a tail. Um, and what you'll do is you cut them out and you can tape them together on the back here. And what I really love about this activity is you'll notice that the abdomen is a little loose on there. And this is pretty accurate to what we see with real live horseshoe crabs. Um, they do kind of have that loose area that almost like a hinge there. So this is a great little craft that you guys can do at home. And of course, we're providing those um, online resources if you guys want to look at those at a later time too. So I hope you guys learned a little something about our horseshoe crabs. And again, if you guys are interested in these programs, keep coming back. We'll keep doing them via Facebook. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend, and we'll see you next time.